Well, it's obvious that our readings today invite us to focus in upon the sin and salvation. That first reading today is a reminder of how God hates sin. That's a very fundamental thing. God hates sin. And when the Israelites sinned, God was going to punish them by wiping them out. But Moses intercedes for them and, and implores upon God's mercy and his love. And, and God relents and God forgives their sin and reconstitutes that covenant with them. God hates sin is the meaning of that first reading. But God is a God of salvation, which is the meaning of the second of the gospel today. That God is a God who reaches out in order to redeem, in order to bring about freedom from sin and a whole new life. And so God is a God who searches for the lost. Those two parables today, the one of the lost sheep and the other of the lost coin, they have a couple different meanings or interpretations, I should say, around those. Well, the more common one is that the shepherd out there would leave the 99 and go out in search of the one. And finding that one would rejoice and would bring that sheep back and put him into the, to the fold once again. But there's another interpretation to that. And that is that no shepherd would leave the 99 to go after the one. Wouldn't do it. Because then the 99 might be attacked by the mountain lion, by the wolves, and he'd lose more. And so a shepherd would just let the one go. That's the price of doing business. But Jesus says, God doesn't act that way. God doesn't do business that way. God doesn't let the one go. Does never write to anybody off. It's the same way with that parable of the coin. You know, there's one interpretation. The coin was very precious and very valuable. And therefore the woman sweeps the whole house and, and uh, finds that coin and rejoices. But the other interpretation of that is the coin was probably worth about a dime. Huh? And this woman is shown as sweeping a whole house, cleaning the house for a dime. I'm not sure what woman would do that. But God does. God will assiduously go out and look for even that which would seem insignificant. I love the second interpretations of those parables. Because to me they speak about who God is in relationship with us and how precious each and every one of us is in the eyes of God. That we truly are precious in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus also in there and says, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 self-righteous who have no need to repent. Once again, I think there's a tongue in cheek with Jesus there. Because there's not 99 people who don't need to repent. <laughs> there's not one of us that doesn't need to repent. And so God truly rejoices over each and every one of us as we open ourselves to the loving, healing, forgiveness, and life of Christ Jesus. It's the mystery of God's love for us. St. Paul, in the second reading today, talks about the fact that Jesus came to save sinners and he says, and I'm the worst one of all. That was very humble on the part of Paul. Remind me of what Pope St. Francis said when he was asked shortly after he was elected as the, the Pope, he, some interviewer said to him, and who is Jorge Bergoglio, his name before he became Pope Francis? And Pope Francis thought for a moment and he said, Jorge Bergoglio, I am a sinner. That's how he responded. I'm a sinner. And that's how each one of us in some way responds in our life. Yes, we are sinners, but we are sinners who are loved and redeemed. We are sinners who have been brought to a new life in Christ. We are sinners who have an eternal destiny in the glory of God's life forever in heaven. 
That's who we are. And so we are sinners who are loved, sinners who are being transformed as children of God. How blessed we are that the Lord loves us, each of us, so personally, so fully. He never writes us off. He always embraces us with his love.